Where'd you get that from? I found it. Can you the last it? time I bought pears was for the kids five years ago. Oh, oh hit me in the nose. Every evening in Australia... No, quick, quick, quick! Now, do not talk! I won't talk! More than four million of us choose to spend the night in front of the telly. Oh, I love this. Yes! But have you ever wondered what other people are watching? Oh, my oh. God! Whoa, I like that. Find out what people thought about what was on in the last seven days. There it is. This has been so juicy. It's all on camera. I think it's one of the most extraordinary series on television. This week saw the launch of Australian Spartan. Is this Ninja Warrior? We watched One Born Every Minute. Oh, my God. Imagine that thing impregnating you. And the ABC marked the 40th anniversary of Mardi Gras with Riot. I had no idea that that's what, how the Mardi Gras started. Spartans on Lee, your favourite show you want to watch? Not interested! You can watch it by yourself! No, you can come here and watch it with me. I am Sparta! I am Sparta! Yeah, they're all going to start off like that. They're all going to stand up. I am Sparta. Come on. I don't want to watch this. Come on. It's just a copy of that Ninja Turtle thing. Yeah. Ninja Warrior. Ninja Warrior. This is a new one. This is Australian Spartan. Spartan. I've been seeing ads for Spartan since the tennis. It's your your, show, your kind of show, Don. No one tries to have all those, you know, incentive slogans you, you get at the gym. Oh, God, and they, they have a big hug, do they? Alone we are strong, together we're unstoppable. Oh, please. The fearsome Spartan course. One slip and you're out. Not let it touch the water. That's the thing, like in Ninja Warrior. Oh, yeah, true. In, a big in Australian Spartan, teams of three must complete an obstacle course without leaving anyone behind. Oh, boring. I reckon it'll be just about the highest rating show in Australia. Spartans! Go! Ready. Oh. Set. That was it. There was, there was no ready, said go. Because they're not three. Set, ready. Her first big test tonight, landing cleanly and safely on the Oh, my side. God. She loves what? Racing. The other two feet. Back. Oh, my God, what? How exciting. She really needs to keep building that momentum. Come on, jump. Jump, jump! Get it higher, get it higher! Just jump, just jump! Whoopsie do. It looks like James is going to be first up. Oh! Oh, God, we have to watch them go, all go through the same bloody contest. Jump, jump! This is all I do. Jump! With the young guns. Woo! Yes! OK, let's have a look at the replay. Oh, don't go through don't it again. Don't go for it again. James was up first, had support from his teammates. It's basically the sport. I have no interest whatsoever no. to watch it. We are Coco Butter. Hang on, my interest is peaking. I'm Dylan, I'm team captain of Coco Butter. So this is what goes on at your gym, is it? Is a whole yes. bunch of this well, kind of... This is what I do. That's... Uh... <laughs> Spare me, please. In Spartan, the group dynamic brings with it a lot of teamwork. Oh, oh. nice. You've got to get very comfortable with each other in this. Uh, oh, I mean, oh, hello. look at the hello. I can't cope with these bodies. I can't cope. It's like gymnastic Chippendales, isn't it? Now it's his job to provide something for his teammates to grab hold of. Oh, uh, grab him by his... I mean, I could have pulled him a lot harder than that. There's nothing to grip onto but each other. Mate, if that was us, we'd be holding onto the back of our ass here. <laughs> so close. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. They worked with Freddie's Jolly Universe by the end of the football season. I love it, I love it. Next, we meet the enthusiastic Sharks squad from Victoria. We are the Shark squad because the Sharks complain about Monday. No, they're up early, biting stuff, chasing things, being scary. Did they drug test these people before the show? Who's going to take control? Sharks! Who's going to win? Sharks! Um, tad out of the top. Yes! I hope they fall in straight away. Now, he lives with autism, but he doesn't let it control him. Why can't they just do a show without a backstory? 
They've always got to have a problem. You watch, they're going to show someone with one leg or something soon. Using inspiration of Phil and his traumatic accident. See, I told you. Mates in school are brought even closer together by tragic accident in which team member Philip lost one of his legs. This is crazy. This is inspirational. Can they land safely? Come on, guys. And land. Yes. Yes. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, I'll give him that. Does it motivate you? No. <laughs> Next Sunday, The Human Ladder. I like that. Yeah, yeah, very good show. I'll be watching that. We're going to watch that again? Definitely not. Game changer. Oh, Everyone okay. I, I really wanted to see that too. Okay. I think it was good. Let's, let's make a date next no. week. Ah, I got this. I don't want to hear oh, the Like crack. those tears come. I don't want to hear the Grip crack. it with the tissue I always used to. It gives you a better grip. Yeah, it's oh, oh, hey. Got it. Smile. <laughs> I'm a celebrity. This week, we caught up on the latest jungle rumblings in I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Ooh, ah. The big news was that one of Australia's most controversial couples was set loose on the camp. David and Lisa Oldfield are inside We're there. about to let them out. Oh, my God, the Oldfields. What? Are they going in? I'm David Oldfield. I'm Lisa Oldfield. She was in The Real Housewives of Sydney. He started up One Nation with Pauline Hanson. Yeah, they hated everyone. Oh, no, they didn't. Was if you were white and a farmer, they loved you. And I'll agree with that. Uh... Oh, there they go. And then they're just wheeling them straight in. Mm. I'll be dropping that box two or three times. <laughs> it's a port loo with some shit already in it. Ah! Nope. <laughs> 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 Another irrelevant housewife on the show. <laughs> They'll really set a cat amongst the pigeons here. So, I mean, one new celebrity can completely change the camp dynamic. Oh, my gosh, yes. Got a couple of the biggest tools in Bunnings. On sale. <laughs> Already needing a break from the old fields, Simone, Vicky and Jackie seek sweet refuge in an ice cream challenge. What is it? Rubok jawbones. Oh, oh God! And cattle tongue. Co coincidentally, one of my top five favourite flavours. <laughs> Vicky is the best on this show by a stretch. She won the UK version of this. Oh, really? Mm hmm. In this Tucker trial, the girls must serve up these exotic jungle desserts using only their mouths. Uh, no. Now scoop it, just jam it. All this hair. Oh, oh. oh, look, she's from England. They eat worse for breakfast, don't they? Go down, place. Um. Vicky is amazing. I'd be so <laughs> oh, Nice one. If you just hold your breath. Oh, 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 oh. What's the other chick doing? I'm so scared. Look at the blowies around it. What is that? Flies. Place down very carefully. <laughs> oh. But no dessert is complete without sprinkles. Oh my god, she's good. Oh, oh my god, god. Shut up! That's what got my eyes covered! Have I got anything on my face? No. No, no all clear. Good, good. I'm back on this show. I'll watch it because of Vicky. Yes, what a buzz. What a buzz. What a buzz. <laughs> After the girls have had a mouthful, back at camp, David is attempting small talk with the other celebrities. Well, because the foreskin serves no purpose. What? Oh, God. But I am circumcised. <laughs> Looks better. Thing. Functions better in the sense of sexually transmitted diseases. And Let's face it, we all love a circumcised penis. It, it's boring without the foreskin. It's no, boring. No. I love it. And your opinion's your opinion. Um, and you shouldn't try to ram it down people's throats. Ugh, wrong choice of words. That's what he said in college. <laughs> but it doesn't take long for David to sink his teeth into a meatier topic. How do you actually feel about Aboriginal people? Get ready for a racist tirade. I don't like a lot of the promotion that's not based in any truth. Shut up! I lived in Alice Springs and I fostered quite a number of Aboriginal children. You're suffering white guilt. You think you're responsible for everything that's gone wrong. Oh, for fuck's sake. At what point will Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people have that they'll feel together as one group? Oh, fuck. It's hatred speech like this that's keeping it apart. They need room and time 
to process what's happened to their people. How long and what are they going to do with it? <gasps> <gasps> Makes my blood boil. You can't just expect Aboriginals to get over it. It's primarily their heartache, not yours. Well done, Fiona. Look at that. She's you are part hideous of those issues, to me. Part of those hideous. issues are medically related. You made my not skin of. crawl. There you go. Shut up, David. He thinks he's won the argument because he's staying there. Oh, you. Anyone for tea? <laughs> One complete detonation today, but surely there's plenty more to go. Well, why are we giving people like this airtime? I don't understand no, right. it. It's because dickheads sell. That's right. Dickheads That's sell. Right. If he was murdered in the jungle, they'd never solve it because everyone's got a reason to kill him. It's yum. Just have a bit on your tongue. Yeah. Do you think? Do you want to try it? Let's get this party started! On Sunday night, the ABC aired Riot. We've been looking forward to see this movie. A telemovie about the birth of the world's first gay and lesbian Mardi Gras. Hello, got big bananas? Who's got a big banana? No, they had bananas there. Oh, bananas in pyjamas. No, they weren't bananas in pyjamas. That looks really fun. I've never rode a big worm up Oxford Street. It's a penis. Oh, is it? Oh, well, I've rode one of them up Oxford Street. Riot. I feel like we're about to watch the gay underbelly. Riot tells the real-life story about the members of camp, the campaign against moral persecution. I don't know much about this. The 70s, so gays probably had to be very discreet. Oh, check out the poofters. See, that's what they had to put up with. It's like a persecution of them back then, isn't it? The group fought for basic human rights, pushing for acceptance of the gay and lesbian communities. Was it against the law back then to be gay? Yeah. They were treated like criminals. They used to bash them. Why? Now, every time we march for rights, the cops are out there breaking heads. Frustrated on how to get their message across, the group take a different approach. I think we should have a street party. Oh. Is this how it came about? If you show everyone that you're having a good time, people get on your side. Like, like Carnival in no, Rio. Really. Or, or New Orleans Mardi Gras. There you go. Just put it to a vote. Yeah. All in favour of a Mardi Gras. This is born from, like, 15 people in a room. I had no idea that that's what, how the Mardi Gras started. One of the founders of the movement, Lance Gowland, then applies for a permit. Usual conditions for a protest, you know the drill. So that's a tick from the police. It's not a protest. It's going to be fun. If you behave yourselves, we'll all have fun. And 40 years later, the police are. Let's get this party started! The party started, Misty. Gee, the floats have come a long way, haven't they? Uh-oh. Oh, no. But there are cops and paddy wagons at Darlow. Serious numbers. The police are spoiling the party. We need to get everyone out of here. immediately. Wait, I thought they had an agreement that the police weren't going to do this. That's bad. They don't do anything wrong. Oh, God, it makes me so angry. I thought they were brave to do this back then. They would have got bashed, beaten. This is brutal. Can't believe this happened. They're fighting about love. The next time they try to put someone else in, we all just push forward and make a break for it. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what's gonna happen to when I get back to the cop shop. Jeez, how scary. Because I know they'll do something to him in there. Come on, move it, move it! Fucking shut them down, mate. Oh, sure. Ah! You dickhead. You fucking stay good. Oh, I'd be so scared sitting in there by yourself, wouldn't you? You wouldn't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> oh my god. I hope he doesn't kill him. Ah, oh, Jesus. Please stop. They're gonna kill him. I didn't realise it was this bad. Why does someone have so upset that someone's a little bit different to them? They can hear it all. Oh, Jesus. That's what homophobia sounds like. You piece of crap. feel like a big man now, do you? 
Oh my God. I wonder if these coppers look back at what they did and have any remorse. It's a shame I was so young that I couldn't even help them. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. You know what, Dee? You're just thinking what that to go for. Good party, Lance. Yeah. We'll be back next year. Want to bet? Yeah. <laughs> Hundred bucks says in ten years there's still a Mardi Gras. And by then you'll be dancing in it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's crazy that it turned from this to what it is now. This is the right song for the show. Because they were heroes. The young guys of today need to see what people went through to allow them to have the life they have today. Well, you won't be able to move down Oxford Street next week, let me tell you. They'll be flying in from every corner of the globe. I could have been a boxer. <laughs> On Thursday, the Lifestyle Channel delivered another episode of One Born Every Minute. Giving birth sounds traumatic. Every minute of every day... <laughs> A baby is born in Britain. It makes me want another one when I watch this. Fuck. <laughs> this time we meet gym junkie Rob and his partner Sarah. You're a macho dad. I first met Sarah at the gym. I don't think you meet anyone not at the gym, Rob. I see her making a couple of mistakes, so I just thought I'd give her a hand. Oh my god. Imagine that thing impregnating you. He was very big and muscly, and it was all quite ripped, and you know, it was just appealing for me. Are you, um, partner? Because down on the Quindot Ward, we're only allowed one visitor at this time of the day. Oh, that's a bit harsh. Who's your one? Well, I've got to come, really, because you're the dad. Do you know I'm just saying? It's up to you, isn't it? He doesn't want to be there. No, not at all. How long does it take, usually, once they've had the jab and that? <laughs> How long's a piece of string, idiot? Sorry, Four it's, days. you know, eating into your gym time. Yeah, I thought they'd just give you the jab up, and then we went. Jab. It was, like, nine months. All right. Bang. Nervous. I should have brought the bloody iPad in the thingy, shouldn't I? Oh, yes, don't talk to your wife. I was talking to you all the time. You were telling me to shut up. No, I didn't tell you to shut up. I just looked at you. And that, that said, shut up, Keith. I'm just in hospital at the minute since bloody this morning. Oh, shut I don't want him in the room. He's bothering me. Yeah. If he doesn't go to the gym, he is in the foulest mood ever. His son's being born and he's like, geez, I'd rather be in the squat rack right now. Mate, he's going to go to the gym. Oh, Rob. Be back tonight. Has she just bolted and gone to the gym? Yep. Mate, she's going to hold that over your head for the rest of your life. She's just waiting for her birth partners to come in. Oh my God, is he still at the gym? What a douchebag. Oh, he's decided to come back. It won't be a while. It'll be a few hours, hun. A few hours? No, you smash it out now. <laughs> Do you really say smash it out now? Just think that you're at the gym squatting. Here he comes. Come on, babe. <laughs> Push, push. Breathe on the gas. Breathe on the gas. <laughs> Suck on that. That's the best stuff. Come on, let's push it. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Come on. Oh. 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 I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. There you go. Congratulations. For her, it's a baby. For him, it's his new five kilogram weight. He'll start going like this with it. <laughs> On the face of it, we're very different because we're two women. But in other ways, we're just another middle-class couple in our early 30s trying to have babies. When we decided to get a sperm donor... A oh, sperm donor. How else do you think? It's not that she went down to Coles and it come in a little container and a turkey baster. We were told that there was a one in four chance of twins. And lo and behold, we're now pregnant with twins. Twins! Baby one is fine, no problems. Okay. But the main thing is that there is almost no fluid at all around baby two. Oh. I think we need to start thinking seriously about delivery. Are you saying in days? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, gosh. Delivering twins at 30 weeks is a risk for both twins. My only thought was, can we please get to this time tomorrow when everyone's still alive?
Jesus Christ, that's terrifying. OK, turn enough, please. Oh. David, do you want delayed cold clamping? They were at both out. One didn't make any noise. Is the little girl not breathing? Oh, yeah, look, they're trying yeah. to... Oh, shit. Premature and underweight, the struggling twin is rushed to the special care unit. So I hope they're both OK. Right. One pound, five ounces. Oh, so tiny. Do you see how small that hand was? Mm. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't tell whether she looked comfortable and happy or whether she just looked miserable. Please don't tell me she dies. Just hurry up, go to the forward to the, like the three months so we know that they live. Please be okay. You see Wilby? <gasps> Wilbert came home after about eight weeks, but Caitlin stayed in for another four. Came home. She's beautiful. She's almost fearless. And there's a bit of me that thinks that that's had to do with how hard she's had to struggle to get where she is. Yeah, wait till they start running around, getting in the cupboards. This is everything now. Now the madness begins, because <laughs> we've got our babies home. <laughs> that was beautiful. So good. Oh, oh, that show always makes me cry. You just want them to grow up and be good. I know. When I told you when Jade was about 18 months, she used to throw tantrums, would lay on the floor and hit her head against the, the floor. And I, so I used to take photos of her. So I said, when you get older and you're like, you've got something wrong with you, I've got proof to say you did it, not me. <laughs> Bring it this way a little no, bit more. I want it there. I like, I like to hold it there. <laughs> I'm serious, don't. I'm not comfortable. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Truly, I don't. Isn't it terrible? <laughs> no sex tonight. Oh, thank God. Previously, Cheers. Cheers, guys. on Wednesday night, we return to the continuing saga of Married at First Sight. Oh, here we go. One of our favourite shows, Meg. It's the highlight of my whole year. Oh, that's very sad. At the dinner party, we watched Dean face off with Ryan over his affair with Ryan's wife, Davina. This is a bombshell night. I'm dying to see what's going to happen to this idiot. Did you apologise to Ryan? Oh, what, what's the... What have I done? <gasps> what have I done? Oh, you're a fuckwit. What have I done to you? What's the problem? Oh, right. I'm pretty sure you went off with someone else's wife. But apart from that, everything's fine. I was tempted by Davina. I changed my what mind at the last tempted? minute. You're not tempted. It was like a thing. I know, babe. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, oh did you did hear that, her, really? Don't be her. This guy's delusional. Oh, my God. How boring are our dinner parties compared with this? This is good bloody TV. Honey, I'm just going to call it. Your head's in the wrong place. Stop focusing on them. Start focusing on me. Oh, he's never focused on you. Oh, shut up, Tracy. She's left him ages ago. That's it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Dean decides the best way to let it go is by giving a speech. All right, All right everyone. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Oh, no. Uh, I'm sorry to everyone for bringing drama... It's fine. ..on, on the group. No-one gives a shit about your thoughts, mate. Davina, very, very sorry. All good. Ryan. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Bye, bye. And speaking of drama... We need to talk. Can we do that now? Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. Ooh. Get in, Trace. So you think it's actually like a good quality in someone to sleep with someone that morning of and then say leave? You see that as someone no, you actually want to be you with? you obviously did because you're still with him. Oh! So don't Bang! I'm not going to sit here and for you to tell me that I'm the one in the wrong here. Put on you, Tracy. Slap her down. He was talking about things to me that was so important. Cue the tears. It's so hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't come here for you. I didn't come here for anyone else except for... To be famous. Love. And followers. And then on Sunday night... 
We were glued to our screens to find out who would stay and who would leave. Well, why don't we kick it off with uh, you, Dean? What's your decision, stay or leave? Um, yeah, I think we've had a great week. We've had a great week. What does a bad week look like? And I'm feeling better about us than I ever have before. And more about Tracy and we've Hey, that's my fan. Closer. So, yeah, I'm saying stay. Yeah, of course uh, you are. Uh, what about for you, Tracy? She better leave or I'm done. Please say leave, Tracy. She's going to. I'm actually saying stay this week. I told her. What? She's staying as well. Oh, no. Congratulations, oh, Tracy, yeah. that you've got no backbone. Yeah. Now time to get Ryan and Davina up. Okay. Mm, okay. Okay, no talking. Okay, prediction hold. Prediction. He's going to put the go and she's going to stay. She's definitely, definitely right and stay. And we are going to start with you, Ryan. Not as much. Uh, well. Uh, yep. Easy call. Mm, now I'm going to leave. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Rip the band aid off. Okay then, Davina, what have you got for a stay or leave? If she says stay, then she will. To stay. She will. She's gonna put a stay because she just wants to be on the show. Yeah, you're gonna hate me. <laughs> God help us. She's gonna say stay. No, she's not. Yes, she is. Bullshit. No, I'm kidding. Oh, oh. oh, oh she's leave! Thank God! <sighs> Good point. Bye. for us. I'm glad she did that. So she's got a little bit of something in her. That's boring now. I don't want to watch it now. Oh. At the Silbury's, Kerry is still recovering after having been stood up on a blind date. I rang you and I said, what am I supposed to do, Isabella? I've waited for 20 minutes and you do said... Do you know how sorry I felt for her? I just thought, mm. to stand someone up is so rude. Do you think he might have sort of cruised around and had a look at you and thought, no. That's probably the meanest thing he could have said. And also on the subject of dating... All around Australia, singles are looking for love. Channel 9 has a new show called Date Night. Oh, not another freaking date show. Join a bunch of singles putting their love lives in the hands of their mates. What a bizarre concept. Swipe left for no, swipe right for yes. And if they swipe right too, it's a match. So this show is just about people swiping yeah. left or right. So it's not Tinder. I think it's something like Go Tinder on the TV. This is not how Tinder works. 47-year-old career girl Lyndall and long-term bestie Amanda are tackling a special project. Hello. Finding Lyndall a date. Let's get Let's have a CV. look. Oh. Hello. What? What? Yeah, no, get on there. He is yep. a casual employee. He is definitely a casual employee. Could you imagine if we sat on the couch all day doing this? <laughs> mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? Oh, my God. For a start, look at the state of the bathroom. I know. I was just thinking that. Oh, no. No, darling. It's just no. She's being very fussy, this girl. This type of dating is awful, though, isn't it? It's just all based on looks. I always get that I look better in person. Also on the lookout is 28-year-old Brownie. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Swear to God, he looks like he can be in a general pants advert. He looks so hipster. Why is that hipster? If Jad rock that, he'd be in jail. But, you know... <laughs> I'm, I'm saying yes to that. <laughs> Glamorous burlesque queens, Nikki and Bella, are also heading online for love. What the fuck? Girl, it's me and you. <laughs> Next. Hmm. Oh, nice cushions, bro. Ah, that's what's familiar. <laughs> I was wondering what was reminding me of. But no one would want to watch a show where people just sit on a couch and comment about people on a screen. In a dramatic escalation, the matched singles begin texting. <laughs> yes! Oh. I, I gotta message her back. We need to come up with a joke. This is tedious beyond tedious. I know so many Joe Five, I just got a mind bag at the moment. What's the joke? This show. That's good. Yeah. Just found the man of dreams. Do you actually get to watch the date, or is this it? But then, at the end of date night, two people finally go on a date. In the day. Oh, nice, mate. Oh, don't talk about 
So what are you looking for? Are you looking for, a, a, like, a relationship? That's weird. No one's talking about that shit on a first date. When was your most recent relationship? Shit question again. Really nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. That's it. They didn't even finish their drinks. That is the most awkward thing I've ever seen on TV. Oh, thank God. That's finished. That's, like, pulling teeth. I think it's one of the worst shows I've ever watched. You know, in a show, there's a, a start a middle and an end. That is just the start, going through the whole thing. There's no middle and there's certainly no end. No end in sight. Didn't we buy coconut rough? Where's the coconut rough? It was in the fridge. Is that still in the fridge or you threw it away? You threw it away? Yeah. I didn't have any. I like coconut rough too, because I like coconut. You ate it all. I didn't have any. You've cut me. No, I'm not talking to you the least of the minute. <laughs> Muslims make up less than 3% of the Australian population. Less than 3%. 3% occupies about 50% of the news. Now, in a On Wednesday way, night, SBS premiered a new documentary series. An experiment is about to get underway. Ten Muslims from across the country Sunni and Shia, Asian and Lebanese, Arab and Aboriginal, will live together under one roof for eight days. Are they putting all different nationality Muslims together in a I house? I think so. It's like Muslim Big Brother. United in faith, but divided on what it means to be a good Muslim in modern Australia. Oh. Muslims like us? It might be interesting, it's just quality. The biggest misconception about Islam is the fact that people think it's all the same, that all women are to wear headscarf, everyone eats halal, everyone waits till marriage to have sex. It's just not the case. Do you know much about Muslims, Em? Um, no, I don't, actually. Right, I always just thought, they were Islam, so they all had to follow one rule, but they don't. No. It's like Catholics. We're all so different. Here you going, bro? As the household gets to know each other, we get to know the household. A good Muslim or a good Christian, I think it all comes down to being a good person. That's exactly right. He seems fairly grounded, this one. Yeah, morning. he does. Oh, but there's got to be an extremist in there. I'm a Muslim slave of God Almighty. There you go. If this is fundamentalism, I'm the biggest fundamentalist. She's got a bit of a superiority complex, doesn't she? Mm. Why is she covered all the way to the top? Unlike a burqa, which covers the face completely, the niqab leaves Anjum's eyes visible. Well, all the other veils and all that that they wear, I think that looks so pretty, but eyes. that I don't like. Not everyone can look at me. Yeah, I just... I am master of myself. If it's her conscious choice that as a religious woman she, like she feels she has to dress like that, yeah. that's her choice. I don't like it, but... I find it very off-putting. Yeah, that's a lot of plaid. Yeah, I mean, keep it simple. That's the only thing that offends me. A few members of the household then try to bond over a board game. What's your theory on evolution? Because you've got a science background. Yeah, so I, well, I... you're studying it, but you're a Muslim, so... Right. Oh, my, if there's anything that's going to cause a war, it is religion and board games. There's still a big question about how set they are in their views um, on a range of issues that we haven't even touched on. I feel like you could get a group of any people from any religion. And you would have the same diversity of opinions? You would. Like the exact same conversations. Yeah. One such conversation is tackled by Fahad, who decides to open up about his sexuality. I don't know if any of you have picked up on this yet, but I'm gay. Ooh. Oh. Oh! A gay Muslim? You're not supposed to be gay, are you? It's not accepted amongst Christians either. I don't think that there's anything within Islam that prevents me from being a Muslim. Good on you. Yeah. That other lady who's got the, the whole thing, she won't like, she won't it. like it. There are solutions. We There's solutions. Please, this habit is not good. Please leave it. Come back. What's Come he going to do? Read the Quran and go, oh, OK, I'm straight again. That's not how it works. To try and defuse the situation, another housemate, Bianca, has an idea. Perhaps we could do some karaoke. Everyone's invited. No. No the music understand. and no dancing in Islam. Oh. She's really a woman of the world, this one, isn't she? She really knows what's going down. Music is something that is that is pretty much prohibited in Islam. What the hell?
hell? She was hardcore. Pretty much any hardline religion bans all fun stuff. It's like Footloose, you know, no dancing, no music, no dancing. Yeah, no fun. Why would God say no, no to music? Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth. Oh, no, maybe there shouldn't be no singing. I love music. Life would be so boring without music. It's a good dancer, this boy. Some really strange. Okay. I think they would have worked it out now if you hadn't told them. <laughs> Next time... You are just treating me like I am wearing my gown and I'm covered from top to toe. So you are. Just stop it. You have... Relax. You have Relax. Said Relax. and said, no, shut Relax. up. This is a great show. It's a different slant on Here Come the Abibs, isn't it? I'm really enjoying this show. It's opened my eyes up to a lot of things. Yeah, Got so some different I. opinions from inside. Need more shows like that. I wanted to be a Muslim. Why? Like, they're all really nice to each other, and it's like, you know, um, oh, I forgot what it was, or maybe it was Buddhism. It's caning me. I've just been so busy at work, I haven't gone to the dentist. What's this? Gargle on that, on your tooth, it's Uzo. I don't drink Uzo. Have you got vodka? I didn't, I didn't bring it for you to drink, I brought it for your toothache. Are you actually drinking it? I finished it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> your toothache's gone. Is it? Mm. Oh, wow, look at that. On Monday night, we tuned in to watch a lifestyle fave. Oh. It's Mum's favourite chef. Ricky. Rick Stein. Oh, fucking cooking show. Mexico! We were there again last year. Mexico is my favourite place, I think. Favourite place in the world? It's definitely the favourite best food. I mean, I just can't wait to get some real Mexican food. I love Mexican food. One of my favourite cuisines ever. And the first thing that strikes me, bacon. Holy oh traffic. 90, is the sea of cars and commuters all queuing to get into the United States. Wow. wow. I wonder how long it takes. And why do people toot their horn? They can see the problem. I'm just so pleased we're going in the other direction. What's it get out of your bloody car for? Tijuana's most famous dish, world famous in fact, is 90 years old in fact. What is it? It was invented here at Caesar's Hotel. What is it? And yes, you've guessed it. This what is it? <laughs> it's Caesar salad. Mexican really? Either. And Are you serious? Caesar salad came Mexican from Mexico. We stayed there. We stayed in that hotel. I thought it was like Greek or something. I can't believe the Caesar salad is Mexican. It's always made at the table. They make it at your oh, table. Anchovies. Starting with crushed anchovies in oil. Crushed anchovies in oil? Smooth Dijon mustard. Oh. Then it's finely chopped garlic. And a What's generous that? spoonful. Garlic? And a splash of Worcester sauce. One egg yolk. That looks absolutely delicious. Disgusting. And the juice of half a lime. Lime? And drizzles in a mixture of olive and rapeseed oils. Rapeseed? A tablespoon of grated parmesan. Mm. Crisp young romaine leaves. Oof. And one supersized crouton. Mm, it's doing it for me. This is legit proper Caesar dressing. I sense you getting a hard on from here. Where's the bacon? No, oh, no, I'd send it back. I don't care what name's on the front restaurant <laughs> or the door, mate. Get back and make a proper Caesar. When Caesar created the salad, he had a, a cook that he hired from Italy. He said, well, I'm making this salad that my mother used to make for us because we were very poor, so we had stale bread, we had a little bit of cheese, eggs, and lettuce. But then Caesar took over and he took the name. I give some royalties to the mum at oh, least. No. Well, I think I better taste it. Oh, he's not even using a knife and fork. Well, you well I'd be just fine to go to Mexico to get that. Moving on southwards towards Ensenada, we stop at a roadside store for a drink. And what we find there really interests me. Holy shit, what is that? Wow, this is a little bit um, unusual. It's called... A bit? It's a little bit. It's called Coco Loco. Coco Loco. You loco. I've never seen anything quite like it in my life before. There's a fork there. There's a fork there. It's a mixture of fruit and vegetables. OK, use your fingers. And all kinds of wacky things, like pork skin. 
pork skin. Oh, I love that. That's so much better than what I'm eating right now. It's not bad, as a matter of fact. Use the fork! Oh, God, he's going to dribble out of his mouth in a minute. I'm sorry, but it's absolutely delicious. I'm... Oh, stop eating and talking. Excuse me. Yeah, that's better. This bar Husson's is really atmospheric. More importantly, perhaps, it's margarita night. Yay! Rick Stein's going to go and try and pick up. There are lots of stories about how and where this famous cocktail was invented. That's not margarita. Is it margarita tomato juice? No. Isn't it? No. I thought margarita was. No. Wait, what's one with the... Um... Bloody Mary. Ah. This is where margaritas came from, was it? Yes. Definitely? Yes. It's a big claim. That's a big mm. call. Back in 1940, when one of our bartenders, he used to mix new drinks for Margarita Henkel, which was the daughter of the German ambassador at the time here in Ensenada. Ah, uh, that's why it's called the Margarita. Someone called Margaret was just like smashing him one day. I'm going to tell my mom they just claimed to bully. Bravo! Adios, Mexico. We can't dance, but that's not your problem. <laughs> I love that. My only issue with it is that now I'm starving. All right, Mister. I'm sorry, but you've got an ear infection. Uh, good it boy. sucks. But... Maybe I should distract him. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, good boy. You're See? so good. Boy. That worked. He was good this time. Oh, you are so Good work, good. team. We can have kids now. <laughs> <laughs> On Thursday, we played along with new ABC quiz show, Think Tank. What is this show? It's a quiz show. I like quiz shows. Welcome to Think Tank. It's like pub trivia without the pub. Who is this? Is that Paul McDermott? No, it's not. Yes, it is. They like answering quiz questions. Do you remember him from Good News Week? Oh, my God! <laughs> How different does he look? Let's find out. Let's meet tonight's contestants. Hi, I'm Karen. OK, Karen. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm a beer-drinking poker player. No, Julia. I want Julia. You want Julia? I really want Julia. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff. I love rugby league. But I can also sew, cook and nip. This guy's a snag. You need this bloke. They will have the help of our eight-headed think tank. Oh, that's the think tank. That's what that is. Emma, what you been up to? But I uh, recently sold a 12-foot trampoline on eBay. And we don't care. <laughs> Sam. Oh, Hi. my God, are they going to do a backstory on all of them? It's time to play think tank. Let's begin round one, the full tank. OK, give it to us. But first up tonight is Karen. You want to drive around Australia? Yep. In a 40-foot bus? Yeah. How long has this been going for? Five minutes, and all I've heard is introductions and bullshit. Get into the quiz. Are you ready to begin uh, the questioning? Yes. Yes. OK. So, each contestant will be asked three... Uh... Come on! Let's just play. Yeah, just start. We'll figure it out as we go. In a 2014 poll by the Australian Booksellers Association, what was Australia's favourite kids' book? Snaggle Pop and Pat, what's his pot? Put a pie, what his name is. Possum Magic. We're going to go to the think tank. Possum Magic. Harry Potter. Possum Magic. Why do they need a panel of eight people to play this game? I think I know the answer. OK. Would you like to share that with everyone? <laughs> if you don't know the answers, you've got a panel over there you can ask them, and they're not experts. They give you the options and you pick. Um, there's enough possums up there in the in the think tank, so... I'm going to go possum magic. Just because three other people said it. Yeah, they'll do it. <laughs> possum magic it is! <gasps> I was right! I was right too. Kate, you've never read it in your life. OK, it's now time to meet our next contestant. So, Jeff, how are you doing? Hey, Just get to the hey. questions. I don't need to know their life story. Look, all the dogs are going to slope. It's interesting, isn't it? Because no. you can so knit. It's not that good, is it? Make it stop, Daddy. Make it stop. OK, you ready for your first question? Who was the first aviator to fly solo, non-stop, across the Atlantic? Was it Wilbur Smith? Or... <laughs> or... Wright Brothers. The Wright, Wilbur Wright. <laughs> well, it was Wilbur. His name was Wilbur. With Mr Egg. How can the Wright Brothers be solo? Well, there's two of them. Well, it's the Wright Brothers then, isn't it? Charles Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh. 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 Charles Lindbergh it is. 
I don't even know who that is. I relied entirely on the think tank there. So, Julia and Jeff, let's go head to head. A top Australian tourist destination. What is the world's largest sand island? Can I ask some Gen Y questions? Not fair. It's basic Australian geography. Fraser Island. Wolf Creek, where's that? Uh, Wolf Creek? I haven't been there, but I think it's Fraser Island. Got it. <sighs> Julia is going on to the next round. I thought he was going to say we have a winner. The next question is the toughest question of the whole show because it's the question that none of our think tank answered correctly. They actually said what they win. It's a glorious trophy. Ew, it is a gross trophy. Do you want it? It's beautiful. Do you want it bad? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you want it bad. How does ABC survive with programs like this? Like, game shows are supposed to be snappy and fast. You know, like, catchphrase? Oh, dear. The Yowie chocolates were based on characters created by cartoonist Jeff Pike, alongside which of Australia's best-selling authors? No, I wouldn't know that. I can't We're be not going to get this, this live back. I'm this... putting the kettle on. Bring back catchphrase. My answer is Enid Blyton. Oh, God, put me out of my misery, quickly. I want catchphrase to come back. The answer is Bryce Courtney. <laughs> so what happened? Bryce Nothing. Courtney. Nothing. I am sorry, Julia, but... What an uh, anticlimax. Good night, everyone. Come See ya! Oh, thank God, it's over. So painful, this show. So we just watched that for nothing. For nothing, no one won. Get this show off, it's ridiculous. Even Hot Seat's better than this. Yeah. What was it called? What are you talking about now? The show I just love. The one you were saying before? Catchphrase. Oh, yeah, catchphrase. You just did it 20 times and I you know. can't remember. But he bored me to tears and killed half my brain cells. <laughs>